Simpler is hands down one of the most underrated devices in Ableton Live, but this fundamentals focused sampler can do a lot more than I think most users of Ableton Live expect. And if you really know those fundamentals and know the device, you can do some really cool, sophisticated things, including what I'm gonna show you today. We are going to turn Simpler into a multi-sampling instrument. Now you might already be like, Whoa, wait, hold up ZW. Why do we want to do multi-sampling in Simpler when Sampler is built to do multi-sampling? And that is a great question. And the reason comes down to really two words, and that's warp engine. One of the main features of Simpler as a device is that it has Ableton Live's warp engine built into it. And the ability to take our multi-sampled instrument and then warp it using the different algorithms in the warp engine is what really makes this technique both cool and special. Plus, frankly, it is just fun to push these devices to their limits and to see what they can do. So, whether you use intro, standard, or suite, you have access to Simpler, and I hope that you take this technique and that you work it into your own production workflow. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. Earlier, I recorded this two octave chromatic scale starting on C3 on my acoustic guitar. You get the idea, don't worry, I'm not gonna make you listen to this whole thing. Uh, so I'm just going to take that and I'm gonna drop it into Simpler. And to create this multi-sampling effect, we're going to use Slice Mode. Now I'm going to use Slice by Transients like this because there are very clearly defined transients. However, Simpler is a little oversensitive. So I'm going to bring the sensitivity down quite a bit till I don't really see any more duplicates. And it looks like we're pretty much there. I'm going to check though, because for every extra slice that it adds, it offsets what we're seeing by a semitone. So that is critical. In addition, if you're doing this yourself, the space between the opening bracket of where your sample lies in the display and your first slice will also count as a note. And so if you're not careful, that can push you back a semitone as well, which just creates more complex math than is necessary. So I'm gonna go ahead and just bring this forward so that the bracket starts at the first slice. Now, simpler in slice mode starts on C1. I recorded C3 to C5. The instrument that you're multi-sampling might not start on C1. So what are you going to do? We want to make our life as easy as possible when it comes to transposing. So I, up in the browser, am going to type in pitch and grab Live's MIDI device called pitch. And I'm actually gonna place it before MIDI monitor so we can see what's happening. So I am going to bring it down 24 semitones. That way, when I play a C Three. And in fact, I'm going to duplicate MIDI monitor and put MIDI monitor on either side so you can see. So if I play a C3, we get C1 on the output. But because slice mode starts on C1, it plays our C3 sample. So pitch is the device here that's pretty critical for making sure that your slice corresponds to the correct pitch that you need it to be. Uh, so then from there, now, if I was doing just a monophonic instrument, I could leave it on mono like this. But you can also set it to poly. And then you can play chords. So now we have a polyphonic multi-sampled instrument in simpler. Honestly, in some ways, that's a bit easier than setting up a multi-sampled instrument in sampler. There are, of course, a lot of limitations with this, but let's actually talk about what is great about multi-sampling in simpler like this. And mainly, it has everything to do 
with the warp engine here. So I'm going to just go ahead and quickly plug in a little loop here. Okay, so here is our loop. Now we can do a bunch of cool things here with the warp engine. So if you want to dial in precisely how many voices you want, you can use the voice control here first right off of the bat and decide if you want retrigger to happen. If we raise the voices, we're probably going to have a bit more overlap with the notes. So let's go up to 12 and hear that. <laughs> Versus, you know, if we go down to the voice, there's really never th more than three or really even two notes playing at once. It's probably going to feel a bit choppier. Yeah, so when we have these moments where there are two notes at the same time like that, it cuts off every other note. So I'm just going to leave it at the sixth that we have it. But where we can start to do some magical things is when we warp it. And the easiest way to warp our samples really is to use this half and double tempo. So if we have the tempo, our samples are gonna get smaller and faster. Now, if we double the tempo, then the opposite is true. It's going to take twice as long every time for our samples to play. And because we have it warped, our slices will remain in the same place, which is amazing. So now it would take 193 measures from start to finish to play this sample, but these are gonna be really washy now. And we're probably gonna hear the warp engine start to struggle to try and preserve it. <laughs> Yeah, and so because we have this little bit of the gap before the start of our first note, it barely is hitting it, so let's jump that forward. And if we switch to something else, like I'm a huge fan of the texture mode. That's magical to me absolutely magical to me. So if we increase the grain size and then I'm actually going to half the tempo so it's not as stretched out. Really washy, let's increase the flux. Pitch envelope can be really cool here as well. What I really like doing is doing a pitch envelope that starts immediately up that octave. And if I play this as is, it's gonna sound a little wonky. Kind of crazy, right? But if we start to bring down the decay so that it happens more quickly, it adds more punch. So what ends up occurring is that the notes being played sound like they're an octave higher, but then that extended release from the rest of the note due to how far we stretched out the sample is at the original pitch. So it's almost kind of like you're using Simpler to create a shimmer reverb an octave down. We can use spread to make it ultra wide. Now we can do the opposite with this pitch envelope. So that's so cool. We're hearing the notes at an octave below, starting at C3 instead of C4. But then the washing, the washiness of it is an octave up, which is really cool. And of course, we haven't even talked about taking advantage of things like the filter or the LFO, being able to just simply close the filter and assign, say, an envelope 
to it. Amazing, amazing sounds right there. Thanks so much for watching. If after watching this video, you found yourself thinking there is way more to Simpler than I realized, then consider signing up for my free video course, Simpler Sound Design, which is all about teaching you the fundamentals of sound design using Simpler. In that course, I go over all of the components and the views available to you in Simpler. And the course finishes with me demonstrating five different projects that you can do yourself to better learn Simpler and to just make cool music, including this project. So sign up, you could start as soon as right now. But beyond that, thank you again so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and feel free to leave a comment and let me know what you plan on multi-sampling. Until next time. So that sounded like a really great, like, ringtone or something. Of course, I can't play it again. Oh, that's nice. That's nice.